in this very moment, all you have is all you need. What would you like to do? What do you believe you've been destined to do? Sometimes you have to fall back into the dark room and focus on you. You have a date with destiny. You have unfinished business. It's time for you to go back to the drawing board with a new perspective. If you can see it, you can have it. I am Clutch. I am the difference maker. I am the game changer. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain. I must grow. I must live. I must evolve. I must go to the next level. I must live in this type of house. I must drive this type of car. Perspective is what changes the game. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Are you going to complain in the face of conflict? Or are you going to seize the opportunity? What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you love was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? Something inside of you that's a snap. You gotta get tired of being broke. I'm talking to that person who grew up without a father. I'm talking to that person that is acquainted with pain. I'm talking to that person that knows what it's like to come from nothing. And so you literally have nothing to lose. And the only thing that's in your head is a dream. The only thing that's in your head is I have what it takes to get to the top of that hill. You must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. Goliath! There will be many giants in your life. There will be depression. There will be anxiety. There will be oppression. There will be stress. There will be overwhelm. Will you buckle under the pressure or will you rise to the occasion? You are not dead yet. You may be tired, but you are not dead. You may be broken, but you are not dead. You may be weary, but you are not dead. You have an opportunity to rise above what happened to you. You gotta make it up in your mind that all you have is all you need. to be homeless I know what it feels like to be ignored you get into a place where you feel like nobody needs you nobody believes you I know what it feels like for people to tell you to write the book watch the course and then when you do it nobody invests in it the hour is now for game changers to emerge for the forgotten for the rejected for the ignored to come out of the ashes and into the light out of obscurity and into victory take the throne with everything that you have in you the hour is now I am coming for the throne I am coming for every room that you lock me out of Every realm that I step into, I will dominate. I am determined to win, no matter what season I'm in. When you counted me out, when you rejected me, when you overlooked me, when you ignored me, I waited painfully in obscurity for the opportunity to take the throne. I am your replacement. Your rejection has forged a new fire inside of me. Man, I'm climbing the ladder. I'm bringing my team. 
I'm coming for magazines and movie screens, billboards and awards, movie scores and labels. I'm signing checks and contracts on every table. I'm no longer stuck in the basement, stuck in the gutter. I'm leaving the casket. You saved me, vacant. You were here, my feet walking the pavement. No more complacent, driven, persistent, and relentless are all an understatement. Who am I? I'm sorry, not sorry. I am unapologetically your replacement. I have worked while you have slept. I have learned while you have partied. I have saved while you have spent. And I will live like you dream. I am relentless. I am resilient. I will not back down. I will not surrender. I am now an agent of change and transformation. I am your replacement. Every room that I walk in, I will change the game. I'm influencing neighborhoods and towns, startups and corporations, from the forgotten about hoods to the nations. I'm coming to reconstruct and resurrect broken foundations, leaving everybody that rejected me out of the equation. The marathon continues. The Lama mentality has left a mark. Shout out to the NBA legend, Kobe, and your daughter, Gigi, from Tom Brady to Drew Bledsoe. Rain, sleep, or snow, I cry. Game changer. Make this moment the moment of truth about yourself. Many of you have been selling yourself short all of your life. You have the opportunity to experience more environmental, physical and mental abundance. Someone who is in a constant state of elevation, their self-talk is, I know who I am, I know where I'm going, and I know where I came from. I wanna continue the conversation of self-awareness. You know, there are a few quotes that I love and wanna share with you as it pertains to the conversation of self-awareness. And the quote is, there is definitely a direct connection between finding your passion and reaching your potential. You will never fulfill your destiny doing work you despise. Passion gives you an advantage over others because one person with passion is greater than 99 who have only an interest. Passion gives you energy. Are you aware of what you are doing with your day-to-day -day time, your grind? Do you like your current relationships? Do you like your circle of influence? Do you like your wardrobe? I think a lot of us, we are programmed to hold on to things that we no longer like. The time is now to step into a place of diligence, hustle, humility, and hunger. The future belongs to the hungry, the humble, the hustler. These are those that will take the throne. There was a new breed of Mamba mentality game changers that in every room that they step in, they are agents of transformation. They are 30,000 feet above the noise. They are architects, pioneers, innovators, students, athletes, lawyers, doctors. I'm sounding the alarm that a new mentality will emerge inside of you. Elevated people know who they are. Uh, they know what they believe, the role in life they are presently filling, their great personal potential. When you are self-aware, you need to be extremely cognizant of your evolution and the fact that you're going to change, the fact that you're not going to be the same person you are. It's a very dangerous thing to be in a place where you are growing, but your life is not. 
you're still connected to people and places that you've outgrown. It's a very dangerous thing to be in a place like that because you end up dwarfing everybody and everything in your life. Do you like what you're doing and do you like where you're going? Let me ask you another question. What would you like to do? If you don't like what you're doing and you don't like where you are and you don't like your relationships and you don't like X, Y, or Z, what do you want? What do you like? And then you gotta be able to add passion to it to activate that thing and make that dream a reality. Are you fully aware of the bridges that are required to cross over to make your dream a reality? I think a lot of people, they have this vision in their head, this dream, but they don't know how to make it a reality. We navigate through life and we keep missing the bridges to bridge the gap between dream and reality. So do you know what is required of you? Are you aware of what is required of you to make happen what you see only in your head? I wanna give you another quote. Almost every man wastes part of his life in attempts to display qualities which he does not possess. I want you to ask yourself the question, are you the person that is projecting a different you to the world on social media, on your websites, in your meetings? Are you projecting a different you? Are you the same person in private? And I know that there are multiple versions of yourself or even I have multiple versions of me, but are they consistent? I wanna ask you the question, are you aware of your why? Are you aware of your why? So now that you've discovered, okay, I'm not doing what I wanna do and I need to learn how to do what I wanna do and I need to figure out the bridge to bridge the gap between the dream and the reality, do you know why? you want to do what you actually want to do. What is your why? Because if the why is great enough, if you're aware of that why, then you can begin to back that why up with work ethic. Every why's gotta be backed up by work. You wanna be committed? You wanna be consistent. You wanna be creative. You wanna be purposeful. You wanna be reflective. And you wanna be grateful. These are just a few things that you wanna be as you are moving forward in your self-awareness. You've identified your weaknesses. You've identified that there is, a, there is a gap between who you are, what you want, and where you wanna be. There's a massive gap. Awareness and the acceptance of that awareness is the bridge to the future. This is going to connect you to your destiny tribe. Your destiny tribe comes with multiple types of people. What would you like to do? What do you believe you've been destined to do? What talents, skills, giftings, and abilities do you possess to support your desire to do it? What are your motives for wanting to do it? Why do you want to become what you are looking to become? What steps are you taking to become and to live the life to make the dream a reality. When you have awareness and you have your actions, but you have no accountability, you set yourself up for a great fall. Let me ask you a question. What price are you willing to pay to make the dream a reality? How aware are you? Are you aware of the price that you are willing to pay relationally, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually? There is a price to pay to manifest a dream. You know, two of the greatest moments in an individual's life is the day they were born and the day that they realize why they were born. Are you aware of your why? Why are you here? What are you doing? Who are you connected to? What are your people, your places, and your purpose? Sometimes you gotta take a break from just about everything, disappear, come back, and shock the world. I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that administrator. I'm talking to that nurse, that doctor. I'm talking to that student. I'm talking to that communicator. I'm talking to that pioneer, that inventor. I'm talking to that entrepreneur. I'm talking to that preacher. I'm talking to that person who refuses to stay where they are. I'm talking to that person that doesn't have a problem laying in obscurity because you know that when you come out of the dark room, all eyes on you. We live in a
a culture of busyness, distraction, and noise. And sometimes the only way something's going to change is if we disappear. Sometimes you gotta delete the app. Sometimes you have to walk away. Sometimes you have to fall back into the dark room and focus on you. Everybody wants destiny. Everybody wants manifestation. Everybody wants fulfillment. Everybody wants the next level and the relationship and a higher quality of living. But nobody wants to eliminate distractions. Nobody wants to disappear for three months, four months, six months and get into a place where you can focus on just you. What if you could just shut out every distraction? What if you could just shut out the world for just a season and focus on you? A man is rewarded in public for what he does in private. Can you unplug for just a moment and focus on you, focus on what matters? Why are you here? What is your destiny? The, the reason why you don't see it, the reason why it has not manifested, the reason why you are so frustrated is because you have not been willing to forsake all that you've been called to forsake and to follow through behind closed doors. Sure, you can talk about it. Sure, you can plan it. Sure, you can write it down. Sure, you can go to the conference and hear about it. You can read about it. But at some juncture, you have to disappear and put the work in and come back and shock everybody that doubted you. I'm talking to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl who feels the fire in their belly. It's time for you to shock the world. You may have to sleep in your car. You may have to go without food. You may have to bounce around from couch to couch. You may have to sacrifice like nobody in your family ever has. But can you do it behind the scenes when nobody's looking, when nobody's watching, when nobody understands the measure of passion that you carry? Can you keep going? Don't stop! You're right there! Go through the process in the dark room that prepares us and equips us for the stages of destiny. It's time to get real. It's time to get raw. It's time to look ourselves in the mirror and come to the resolve that this version of ourself is not going to carry us in the stretch. That I've been this version of myself long enough that if I don't change, if I don't do something about this, then I'm gonna find myself bankrupt. Some of the most monumental and transformational portraits and pictures that we've ever seen were developed in the dark room. We celebrate athletes and we celebrate critical thinkers and innovators and actors and we praise them and coin them our heroes and we follow them by the millions. We love what they do in public but you don't know the story behind the glory. You don't know the blood the sweat, you didn't see the tears that they cried, the prayers that they prayed, the countless weeks where they went without sleep to get where they are. One of the greatest tragedies in life is to live and not know why you're living. I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that wants their future, that wants to fulfill their destiny, that wants to manifest, that wants to walk in discipline and determination. I'm just wondering, is there anybody here that's willing to disappear? Are you willing to forsake all distractions? Can you hide yourself in the library? Can you hide yourself in the gym? Can you hide yourself in the boardroom and plan and caucus and do what is required behind the scenes in order to manifest the moment? Can you hide yourself in your books? Can you hide yourself in your closet? Can you hide yourself in the prayer rooms? Can you hide yourself? We have this passion to be in the public eye, but no patience to do the work behind the scenes. Stop telling the world what you are about to do. Steve Jobs once said, we do not say anything about future products. We work on them in secret and then we release them to the world. 
We only have so much real estate in our minds, in our hearts. We only have so much bandwidth in our mental capacity. And the more distractions, the more delusions, the more negativity that we allow to take up real estate in our hearts and in our minds, the less energy we have to fulfill the call, to fulfill destiny, to manifest the idea. Everything that you think about, that you meditate on, everything that has to your attention has to be worth your time. So now it's time to navigate and do an appraisal of everything that's in our life, everything and everybody in our life. Time to do an appraisal and ask them this question. Are you worth my time? If you're not, it's time to unplug. Time to unplug. Time to unplug. I'm just wondering if there's anybody that can hear my voice right now that has come to the end of themselves and they are willing to eliminate distractions. They are willing to delete social media apps if they have to. They are willing to walk away from everything that is distracted, everything that has diluted your devotion and your determination, every disease and dysfunction and disorder that has pulled you from destiny after you have heard it, after you have received it. After you have written it down, after you have spoken it once, do what is required to manifest it into reality. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. Stop telling everybody what you're going to do. Stop telling everybody what your next move is and just disappear and do the work that is required. Don't be bitter. Don't be frustrated. Listen, just remain faithful behind the scenes. Promotion is coming. Stages and opportunities are being prepared right now as you sacrifice in secret, as you put the work in in the dark room, as you do what is required to hold in your hand what you see in your hand. When no one is there to affirm you, when nobody's there to validate you, when nobody is there to agree with you, you build in the dark and you announce it when it's finished. You've been an underdog in your relationships. If you've been an underdog in the weight room, if you've been an underdog in life, if you've been an underdog financially, I'm talking to that person who grew up without a father. I'm talking to that person who grew up without a mother. I'm talking to that person who didn't grow up with handouts. I'm talking to that person who maybe if you did grow up with a little bit of handouts, but maybe you were misunderstood and you were overlooked and you were undervalued and you were mishandled and misguided. You got a dream to buy a house. You got a dream for better relationships. You got a dream to, to win a fight. You got a dream to get your family out of the hood. You got a dream to lose weight. I mean, whatever that dream is, whatever you have, that goal, that improbable feat, once you get it set, once you smell that, once you get a feel for it, a taste of it, and, and the underdog is, is an individual who, who refuses to live in the dark. They refuse to remain in obscurity. They refuse to live in stress and overwhelm and anxiety. They are somebody who is tired. Like when you come to the end of yourself, you got to get tired. Like you have to get tired. Tired. Something inside of you has to snap. You got to get tired of being broke. When you get tired of being coined the loser, being coined not enough, being overlooked and undervalued and underpaid, you got to get tired of that. When you get tired, that's when you win. The underdog is a person that comes out on the playing field and says, okay, I've been in this place of pain my whole life. I've gone without for so long. This is the day you make up in your mind where I will take the throne. I'm talking to that person that is acquainted with pain. I'm talking to that person that knows what it's like to come from nothing. And so you literally have nothing to lose. And the only thing that's in your hand is a dream. The only thing that's in your head is I have what it takes to get to the top of that hill because I am not the wolf on the hill. I am the wolf climbing the hill. I have nothing to lose. Counted out, overlooked, undervalued, misguided, betrayed, somebody who has been really dishonored, disrespected, somebody who has lost everything, 
who people stop believing in, is a very desperate person. They're climbing a hill. They're trying to achieve a dream. And when you are desperate, you are very dangerous. And a dangerous man or woman is somebody who is a disruptor. They don't play by the rules. They are coming for blood. They are coming for blood. Your story is not your fortress. Your story is your fuel. When you doubt the underdog, it's like music to his ears. Tell me I'm not good enough. Tell me I'm not strong enough. Tell me I won't finish. There is this intrinsic emotion, this instinct. You have just awakened the lion in me because they said you can't do it. They said you don't have what it takes to make the investments. They said you don't have what it takes to lose the weight. They said you don't have what it takes to hang on to your marriage. Everybody has been counting out. Everybody has been doubted. The underdog is not a person who doesn't feel pain, doubt, and fear. The underdog is a person that turns that pain, that doubt, that fear into their fuel. If you came from a place where you had nothing, that's everything that you need! Everybody wants a piece of the pie. Okay, everybody wants a piece of the pie. In any facet of life, in every arena you walk in, there's pie. And the, the thing is, is that that pie doesn't get any bigger. The pie never gets any bigger. It's the disciplined, desperate, dangerous mentality of an individual that says, I'm gonna push whoever I gotta push out of my way to get my piece of the pie. Those are the people that get the pie because the pie doesn't get any bigger and the pie does not pursue you. You have to go after it. So whatever it is that you're going after, whatever it is you feel as though you've been destined to do, are you willing to push whoever, whatever, out of your way to get your piece of the pie. So if you're listening to me right now and there's anything in your life that is defeating you, if there's anything in your life that seems like an improbable feat, you gotta smell blood. Once you get that scent like a hound dog, you get that scent, you see what is possible, you see what you are capable of. In the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough, you're not tall enough, you're not big enough, you're not wide enough, you're not fast enough, it's in that very moment that the dreams gotta get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the stress, than the overwhelm. It's gotta get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream, there's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. And so an underdog is just somebody who refused to live in the setback. It is a person who rebels against your reality. Your reality of me is that I'm not enough. Your reality of me is that I'm not qualified. Your reality of me is that I'm not quick enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not linear enough. This is your reality. My reality of me is that all I have is all I need. I'm coming after everything you said I couldn't have. If you're gonna come back from the setback, the number one thing you have to do is make up your mind that you are no longer going to live in the pain of the past. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. And when we talk about this underdog mentality, the underdog is just a man or a woman who has made up their mind. They are no longer going to live in their setbacks. They are no longer going to live in your reality. Your reality of me says I'm not enough. Your reality of me says I can't do this. Your reality of me says you won't finish today. My reality says all I have is all I need. I'm not living in my setback any longer. I'm moving forward. When we talk about a dog mentality, the dog scrambles, the dog barks, the dog runs after whatever it wants. When a dog is hungry, move out of his way. This is coming for blood. And the reason why you don't have what you want is because you are not hungry enough. You are going to have to push, 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 push.
Nine times out of ten, the underdog always comes out with the win because the underdog was more hungry. The wolf that is on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf that is climbing the hill. The underdog is still trying to prove himself. The underdog is still trying to tell the world, I can do this. And the underdog is, is an individual who refuses to live in the dark. People tell me all the time, it's hard to get wealthy. It's hard to grind. It's hard to be focused. How do you even do these speeches? It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. You either gonna work for it, or you gonna sit there and let life knock you down and dare you to get back up. It's hard to practice perseverance. It's hard to practice compassion and forgiveness. It's hard to set personal goals. It's hard to take care of yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to live in bitterness and unforgiveness. It's difficult to be jealous of somebody. It's hard to let yourself go. It can be difficult to lay your life down and humble yourself and rid yourself of the disease of ego, pride, and comparison, and competition. It's, it's difficult. It's hard to be creative. It's hard to be an introvert. It's hard to be an extrovert. Singleness can be difficult. Marriage can be difficult. Raising your children on your own can be difficult. It's hard to wake up early. It's hard to wake up late. But there's a reward on the other side of waking up early. If you wake up late, you've lost too much daylight. What somebody else did before you woke up, now you only have a fraction of the day to get it done. There's a reward on the other side of one pain, and there is regret on the other side of the other pain. And if you're going to win the reward, you're going to have to persevere. You're going to need endurance. You're going to need to be consistent. And on the other end of the pendulum, there is the pain of regret, where you did nothing because you were afraid you would make a mistake. The pain of regret will hurt you. So choose your heart. Make a decision. I want the pain of finishing something. I want the pain of persevering. Give me the pain of forgiving my haters. Give me the pain of forgiving people that tried to kill me. Give me the pain of letting it go. Give me the pain of growth. Give me the pain of acquiring new skill sets and talents. Give me the pain of managing my time well. Give me the pain of waking up early. Give me the pain of praying when I didn't feel like it. Forgiving when I didn't feel like it. Letting go. Give me the pain. I'll take that pain because of the the other side of that pain, there is a reward. Every single day of my life, I'll take reward over regrets. Will you keep sleeping on your potential? Or will you wake up and make it happen? Choose your pain today. The anguish, the irritation, the frustration that you feel today will be your strength to leap walls tomorrow, to leap hurdles tomorrow, to champion the day tomorrow. So you gotta turn your pain into progress. You gotta learn how to turn your pain into power. Consider this your wake-up call. What most people fail to realize is that pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. There is no path in life without pain. Whatever it is that you're going after, whoever it is that you've been destined to become, you cannot have it. You will not become it without pain. You will face challenges and difficulties and giants regardless if you are single, if you are married, if you are a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home father, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're working a nine to five, 
if you're an educator, if you are an athlete, if you are a musician, a singer, a producer, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are doing, pain is inevitable. If I'm going to hurt like this, if I'm going to bleed like this, if I'm going to cry like this, let me cry because I'm in the best shape of my life. Let me cry because I'm conditioned to weather the uphill war. Let me cry because I'm building my relationship. I'm building my business. I'm building my legacy. Let me cry because it hurt, but there is a reward on the other end of my pain. Let me cry tears because I passed the test, because I gave it everything I had. Choose your heart. Everything in life comes with hardship. Make a decision. At some juncture, you will encounter pain. And the moment that you get acquainted with pain, you get acquainted with hardship. You realize that no matter what you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you plan, you will not be able to avoid a measure of pain. I don't care what it is, losing weight, I don't care what it is, a, a new eating paradigm, a new relationship paradigm, new thoughts, new behaviors, it doesn't matter what you're after, what you're looking to become, if you don't go to the gym, it's going to hurt you, if you go to the gym, it's going to hurt you, your muscles are going to tear, but on the other side of that pain, there is a reward, there isn't any regret, you won't regret taking care of your body, on the other side of making those healthy decisions, there is a reward. It's the reward of discipline. It's the reward of longevity. It's the reward of influence. It's the reward of power. Do you want results? Do you want a reward? Or do you want regrets? The decision is yours. It's all hard, so choose your heart. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Pick your pain. Everybody's got a plan until life knocks them out because we weren't ready for the pain and when the pain came we did not process it. Processing pain is a skill set you've got to acquire. It's a type of currency if you want the future, if you want next level, if you want tomorrow, if you want to manifest, if you want this thing, I don't care what it is, then you're going to have to get acquainted with pain. The pain of discipline. The pain of growth, the pain of learning, the pain of giving, the pain of forgiving, it all hurts. So pick your pain, choose your heart. Because at some juncture in life, at some corner you're going to turn, you are going to encounter pain. And you've got to process that pain well. Hear me when I say it, pain is unavoidable. It's hard to let go of the past. It's hard to give sometimes of your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's hard to balance work life. It's hard to acquire new skills. It's hard to be stagnant. It's hard to be a workhorse. It's hard to be lazy. It's hard to learn how to manage and cultivate relationships. It's hard to learn from your experiences. It's hard to turn your mess into your message. It's all hard. It's hard to hold on. It's hard to let go. But there's a reward on the other end of many of these hardships. You better choose reward or regret. There is always reward and regret attached to every decision that you make. Hope. Hold on. Pain ends. Pain does have an expiration date. And when that pain ends, another one will surface, but you will be strong enough because you endured the current pain well. Everybody wants resurrection, but nobody wants the pain of dying to themselves. There's a pain that hurts you, and there's a pain that changes you. So today, all I want you to do is make a decision to choose your heart. Some of you don't even realize you have unfinished business. You need to go back where you left off with a new perspective. Go back to the gym. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the business. Go back. To
into the relationship, go back to the burning building. You have unfinished business. All you got to do is show up with a new game plan and a new perspective. You got to finish business. You have unfinished business. You got work to do. Perspective is everything. Let's go. I need you to hear me loud and clear. How you see this thing is everything. You cannot change the past, but you can change your perspective about it. You got to see this thing differently. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Stop complaining about the relocation. Your viewpoint is your advantage. Thank you for breaking up with me. Here's what you did. You opened up another opportunity for somebody else to come into my life. Thank you for firing me. You gave me an opportunity to explore entrepreneurship. I'm not bitter, I'm better. Perspective is what changes the game. Everybody wants increase and, and abundance and lifestyle change and new zip codes and new area codes, but you only read once a week and you only work out once or twice a month. And so the, the reason why you don't have what it is that you see, the reason why what's in your head is not in your hands, it's not your reality, is because your perspective opposes your potential. You don't have it because you don't see the value in it. If you believe you've been called to be the difference maker, the game changer, the disruptor, the person that comes into a room and commands the atmosphere, if you believe you've been called to be necessary and not grossly irrelevant, then everything you do, everything you see, everything rises and falls on your perspective, your perception, your viewpoint. How do you see this thing? What happens when your perspective, your perception diametrically opposes your reality? If you are going to give and grow and evolve and attain and become, everything rises and falls on your viewpoint. Show me somebody that hates to work out. And I'll show you a man that almost lost his life and the doctor said, if you don't work out, you'll die. One sees it as cumbersome. One sees it as a problem. Another one sees it as a privilege. He sees it as his second chance, his new lease on life, that I have to work out. I get to work out. I get a chance to live a little longer. So one person sees the gym as a prison and another person sees the gym as a passport. One man came within inches of losing his life and another man has never come within a hundred miles of losing his life and he only works out twice a month and somebody else works out four or five times a week. The reason why you only do it once or twice a month is because you don't see the value. Your viewpoint is either your advantage or your assassin. Your viewpoint will either get you going or get you killed. We see a storm, we see rain, and we think depression. We think, I can't do anything. Instead of thinking, grass can't grow without rain. Roses don't bloom without rain. Number one, there's one thing I need you to stop saying, and that is, I should do something. That perspective, that viewpoint, that ideology, that philosophy, that mindset, is gonna get you bankrupt. I should start this. I should stop that. I should forgive. I should. You don't get what you should. You get what you must have. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain. I must grow. I must live. I must evolve. I must go to the next level. I must live in this type of house. I must drive this type of car. I don't care how bad you think the shoes are that you are wearing, there is another man in this world who will kill to walk a mile in the pair that you wear. Marcus, what does this mean? This means that what you are complaining about, what you hate, what you can't stand, what you want to walk out of, what you want to give up on, there is somebody out there that would die 
to be in your position. And so here's what I need you to ask yourself. Is this problem an issue or is it an opportunity? Some of you, all you've been waiting for your whole life was an opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you love was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? I need you to see the bigger picture. I need you to have a little gratitude. You need to learn how to smile. You need to work out. I know you hate the gym. I know you hate to lift weights. I know you hate cardio. I know you don't like drinking water. I know you don't like taking care of your temple. You think it's the hardest thing to do in the world to commit. But there is somebody who's in the grave today. And if they had another opportunity to live, they would enthusiastically with great confidence and courage and consistency do what you hate just to live a little longer. Find the positive. See the bigger picture. Guard your gratitude. The trial, the tribulation, the adversity, the giant is not your assassin. The giant is your opportunity. Are you going to complain in the face of conflict or are you going to seize the opportunity? I don't care what it is that you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to give, how you're trying to evolve, what you are looking to become. Everything rises and falls on your perspective. Stop complaining about the jealousy and the envy and the backbiting and the person that gave up on you and the person that wasn't present and the person that lied to you and the person that attempted to manipulate and control. I'm not weary, I'm wiser. I'm not toxic, I'm triumphant. I see this thing differently. This season that you've entered into did not come to break you. It came to build you into the man or woman God has destined you to be. Change your perspective. There's a reason why they say, see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't see that light, you're going to lose your mind. You will lose yourself. You will snap in half if you don't see past this. The challenge for many of us is that we got to see past our present pain and into the fruitfulness of the future. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. You cannot change the past, but you can always change your perspective. No problem could be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. The severity of your problems is a matter of perspective. Change your perspective, and most of them become insignificant. Some of them will no longer exist as problems, but opportunities. The right perspective is the instrument you need, the tool you need. It's a discipline, it's an advantage. If you change the way you look at things, then the things that you see will change. Knowledge, a speech, a motivational moment will not sustain you unless you put it into perspective. How will you see the rest of your day? Because how you see the rest of your day will oftentimes determine the way you see the rest of your life. Shift your perspective. If you can change your perspective, you can change the future. Many of you listening to me right now, you have unfinished business. And you need to go back to that dream, back to that idea. You have a date with destiny. You have unfinished business. It's time for you to go back to the drawing board with a new perspective. It's your viewpoint, and watch this. Your perspective actually shapes your language, and your language shapes your world. 
And so if you don't start thinking right, you're not going to talk right. And if you're not talking right, you're not going to experience the world that you see in your head. I don't know who God has called you to become, but what I can tell you is if you keep seeing it the way you have seen it, you will never become it. Everybody wants next level. Everybody wants wealth and influence and everybody wants to be this esoteric novelty. But listen to me, you will never experience any of this showing up in your next season with the same viewpoint. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. I know you're tired, I know you're broken, and it feels like you can't take any more. But you have come to the end of yourself. But all of this means one thing, that you are a survivor. Your greatest weakness, the hurt, the pain, the betrayal, the feeling that you get when you wake up and you are inundated with so much responsibility. Feels like you can't breathe. Paralyzed by the pain of life. I can only imagine what it's been like to be you. But I'll tell you this, there is a switch inside of every one of us. And at any moment in life, you can turn that switch from surviving to winning. Because ultimately, survival is an illusion. There's only two types of people in this world. There's people who lose, and there's people who win. And it's hard to be a loser, and it's hard to be a winner. Today, I want you to make a decision to flip the switch inside of you from surviving to winning. It's time to win. See, the human being is the highest order of creation on earth. And one thing I am crystal clear about is that at any moment in your life, you can come across a speech or a piece of information. And if that information is applied, that revelation, it can forever alter the fabric of your existence. It's in the midst of our greatest storm. If you, if you can hear my voice, you've survived. You survived the hurricane. You survived the storm. You survived the trial. You survived the betrayal. You survived it all. In order to change your life, all you gotta do is flip this switch from surviving to winning. See, a survivor will sit and wallow in the pain of the past. But a winner will build even when they are broken. I may be weak, I may be hurting, I may have pains, I may have been down, but I am not out. I am getting out of this hole. Today, I'm getting out of the pit of misery and into my destiny. Your pain is not bigger than your purpose. And even though you have been crushed in this very moment, you still have your calling. Flip the switch from weakness to winning, from hurting to conquering, from losing to champion. I can get through this. I will get through this. I must get through this. The days you're not plugged in are the days you don't get 120. I have too much to accomplish to be satisfied with where I am right now. I have too much on the line. I have too many people depending on me to win. I must stay hungry. You want to kill an alligator? You kill it right after it eats. Because right after it eats, it gets satisfied and it goes to a state like it's almost paralyzed. Some of y'all in this room, were you paralyzed? You had a little success? You've done what nobody else in your family has done and now you chilling? 
Come on, you ain't hungry no more? Next hundred, I need you to stay focused. Why? You should still be hungry. What have you eaten that's got you satisfied? What have you done? What have you accomplished that got you so full? I'm a contender, but the next hundred gonna change my life. You're gonna change this world. We're ordinary people doing extraordinary things. If that's you and you feeling me, just say I can. Yeah. Come on, come on, I can. I can. I can. Come on, one time. I can. Yep, I will. I will. Yep, I must. I must. All right, all right. You study any animal in the animal kingdom, and I will tell you this: that the lion is king because the lion is hungry. The elephant is bigger than the lion. And the sheep is faster than the lion. But nobody is more hungry than the lion. Go ask any athlete, actor, musician, philanthropist, it doesn't matter. You ask anybody who is a champion, and the difference between them and their opponent is they were more hungry for it. If there's anything I can pour from my heart in this moment, my greatest piece of advice is to protect your hunger. All right, come on, come on, I want to put some context into it. I want to put some context. They sent my mother-in-law home eight years ago. Uh, the cancer metastasized throughout our whole body. They're like, it ain't nothing we can do for you. Go home, spend time with your family. And people was like, yep, that's it for her. She said, it's not it for me. And they said, what do you mean it's not over for you? The doctor said, she said, I don't care nothing about a doctor. I got to see my grandson graduate from high school. He's a junior now at Michigan State University. She said, I got to see my granddaughter graduate. My only two grandkids. I got to see my granddaughter graduate from high school and she graduates in June. She said, after that, I might die. But up until then, I ain't going nowhere. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And what we said to each other is, I can get through this. I will get through this. I must get through this. So, so I just need you to think about three people in your family that you love, three people. Three people that you love, three people. You got them, they there, you got them. This is what I need you to do for me. Cause some of you have a hard time staying motivated for a straight hundred days. So what I need you to do for me is I need you to think about those people every day when you're doing what you're doing. Do you have some days where you just wanna hit the snooze button? Raise your hand for me, you wanna hit the snooze button, right? So watch this, this is what has to happen. That person that you think about has to be louder than the snooze button. So when you think about granny, you gotta think about, do I hit the snooze button or do I get up and make it happen for granny? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who are you doing this for? So the days you don't feel like getting up, just think about them. Somebody tell me in this room, when you think about your siblings, when you think about mom and dad and grandma, when you think about your uncle and aunts, when you think about those coaches, those people who've been there for you, just raise your hand if you say, E.T., sleep is better than that. Just raise your hand and tell me, anybody in the room, sleep is better than them, E. Raise your hand. Somebody tell me, E.T., you don't, you don't get it. You don't know how hard it is, E. I probably don't. I just lived in abandoned buildings. Hey, I trash cans. I probably don't. Maybe I ain't never been through what you've been through, but I've been through my go-through. And you don't, you don't, you don't get here by quitting when you're tired. You get here by quitting when you finish, when you're done. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. You stop when you complete it, when you execute it. Execution is worship. And so I execute for my mom. I execute for my grandma. I execute for my sister. I execute for those kids in the hood who looking for a role model. That's why I wear the hat with a PhD. That's why I wear the J's. So when the kids in the hood look at me, they say, if ET can do it, I can do it. That's why I can't quit and give up, even though I get tired just like everybody else. Why? Because this is what I do. This is my lane. This is your lane. You got to murder it. So when I ask you, you got energy, don't play with me. When I tell, when I say again, you got that energy for the next hundred days, I need to feel your soul in this room. All right, I can? Come on, I can? Come on, I can? I, can. I will. I, I must. I Come on, I can? I, I will. I, I must. Give yourself some energy. Come on. I don't care if you gotta listen to me a thousand times, I need you to get crystal clear about your future. Because the only reason why you are here, the only reason why you're alive, is because you have work to do. And you gotta figure out why on earth are you here? What is your destiny? What is the dream that God has given you? You gotta have like a shark mentality because if a shark swims backward, it dies. A shark can only move forward. And so I need you every single day you wake up to smell blood and go after that dream. When you are hungry, you are creative. 
When you are hungry, you are innovative. When you are hungry, when you are no longer full, when you are no longer satisfied with where you are and you raise your standards, it is only then that you can have your future. If you can stay hungry, you can get the resources. If you can stay hungry, you can get the strategy. If you can stay hungry, the ideas going to come. If you can stay hungry, the connections will be aligned. If you can stay hungry, the problem with many of you is that you got full. You got complacent. You got lazy. Somewhere along the line, you lost your enthusiasm, your optimism. You lost your hunger. I'm never full. I'm never full. I'm never full. I'm never full. You gotta get hungry, 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 hungry! Eliminate all distractions. Eliminate all distractions. So you gotta have a goal. You gotta have a dream. You gotta get hungry. And then you gotta get real disciplined. Because motivation will get you going. A speech will get you fired up. But discipline is going to give you the power to stay committed to whatever that goal is. I'm going to tell you this right now. Some praise can be poison. It keeps you locked in a state of paralysis. And you shine in trophies from the past. And that's why you always hear those people from the past like, Yeah, remember back in the day when I used to do this. Remember back in the day. They're still shining the trophy of the past accomplishments. So sometimes we can, we can receive praise like a venomous snake that injects its poisonous venom in our veins and in our heart and we get full we get real full you gotta be hungry for your dream you gotta be hungry for your next level you gotta be hungry for connection and alignment you have to be hungry to fulfill your destiny hunger is not an idea hunger is not a mood hunger is a lifestyle i'm never full this is me every day all day i'm hungry to learn you gotta be hungry to read you have to be hungry to grow you have to be hungry to manifest what is in your head just say i can come on come on i can i can come on one time yep i will yep i must There is a light inside of every one of us, an ember that burns and begs us to become more than what we have ever been. This is the flicker of creativity, the spark of an idea, the outline of a design. You gotta make it happen. Can't nobody else do it for you. You're in charge of your it. Every day the clock is ticking. Every year the calendar moves. Your it cannot be delayed forever. Your it gotta start with your first step. Your it gotta start with your first move. Matter of fact, it begins in your mind. It is your dreams. It is your purpose. It is your future. There are three types of people in this world. There are people who watch things happen. There are people who wonder what happened. And there are people who make things happen. You got to determine which person you are. You can make a wish or you can make it happen. You must first believe that you can, that you will, that you must. And you are no longer willing to tolerate being in the room of failure. Then that's when you're going to break free. Are you going to rise and go higher and go stronger than you ever did in your life? Or are you going to look in the mirror and see that image and realize that you are more than the image in the mirror? There's enough fire inside of you. After everything you have been through, you've got to be able to see your value. Are you going to realize that it is time for you to step up? and make it happen? Or you're gonna put aside all your doubts and fears? Or you're gonna be strong enough to go forward? Or you're gonna allow weakness to tell you that you don't have what it takes to make it happen? 
There is no one like you in all of the earth. There is no one that can do what you can do. You are the only option. You are the only play. Nobody else is going to be able to do this. When you get that in your head that you are the only one that is going to be able to do this, that nobody's going to give you a handout, that you have to make this happen, that every room you walk into, you show up and you show out and you leave it all on the table. We don't have time to second guess. It's time for you to rise up and it's time for you to make that first step. It's time for you to start grinding so that you can make it happen. You got to make it happen. At the end of the day, you got to be strong. At the end of the day, you got to push forward. You got to fight forward. You got to make it happen. You must accept this truth. That you were born for such a time as this. And that at this very moment, all you have is all you need. Make it happen. Persistence, consistency, resilience, courage, establishing your priorities, mastering self-awareness, maintaining focus, believing others have failed, others have gone, others have missed their moment. This is the hope that strokes our passions. It's our aspirations that must become our allies. Do you really have what it takes when someone tells you that you're not good enough and you're not strong enough to prove them wrong and make it happen? Do you have the faith and the resilience to go through the storm, to go through the fire, to go through all of the things that have been trying to put you down. To make it happen, you gotta fight through all of that. All of your challenges, all your limitations, all your haters, you gotta fight through all of that. And that's why victory will taste so sweet. The moment that you destroy the door, the way out, in the room of your dream, that's when you make it happen. What you do, while you are in pain, will echo through the ages. Well, you're gonna realize that you are your greatest creation and what you create relies on you. You may get knocked down, but so what? You may feel like you can't carry on, but so what? That doesn't mean that it's over for you. That doesn't mean that you can't go forward. That means you got to rise up. The process is muddy. The process is murky. The process is dark. The process is cold. The process is going to leave you in places where you're going to feel like you have been abandoned, like nobody believes in you, nobody supports you. When you don't see a light at the end of your tunnel, you got to remember the light that is burning inside of you that nobody is able to put out. There is not a person on this planet that can stop you. Sometimes you're gonna just say you just don't have it anymore. You must reconnect with your possibilities. That means you got to be hungry. That means you got to be strong. That means you got to have the power. That means you got to fight and push and dig and make it happen. Nobody cares until you make it happen. What if you worked hard for it daily? What if you stop listening to the wrong people and start listening to the right people and let their voice be louder? People that love you's voice gotta be louder. People that care about you, their voice gotta be louder. People that want you to succeed, their voice has got to be louder, but can't nobody's voice be louder than yours? You gotta understand what voice to listen to. 
You might be hanging on by a thread right now. Burned out on the verge of dropout, but I need you to take a moment and garner up all the belief that you have left in yourself and in the idea of what is possible to make this thing happen. It's those who are not dating the idea, but married to the reality that they are the only option. But until you understand that it's up to you, it is up to you to make it happen, then nothing will move. Nothing can happen. Don't depend on other people to give you permission. You have the power to make it happen. So move, push, make moves, and go forward. Be strong enough, be willing enough, and make it happen for you. Opportunity is everywhere, but I need you to grow up and be ready for this opportunity. Maturity is knocking. Wisdom is knocking. You are stronger now. You are wiser now. It's time for you to answer the call with your chest stuck out. It's time for you to answer the call with your head held high. Will you keep delaying a better life? You gonna keep letting everybody pass you by? Why not you? Come on, why not you? No sunrise without a sunset. There are no roses without rain. If you can remember that, then you will always see adversity as advantage and obstacle as opportunity. Know this, that your process may be messy, but your mess will become your message. You can't just stay still. You can't just stay neutral. You have to continue to evolve. But you gotta rise up right now and you gotta understand that you are powerful and you gotta focus on your end. You can, you will, you must never give up. The moves that you make will echo throughout the ages as there is a generation of people who are attached to your why. And if you don't succeed, They'll never believe, so make it happen. I'm talking to that football team. I'm talking to that baseball team, that basketball team. I'm talking to that fighter. I'm talking to that track star. I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that student. I'm talking to the person who failed the exam over and over and over again. I'm talking to that individual who feels as though all hope is lost, who feels as though they gave it their all. If you are still alive, you've got something left. You still think failure is final. You're gonna learn to change the movie that is playing in your head. And the moment that you stop thinking that failure is final and you shift your perspective and you understand that failure is a lesson learned, it is at that very moment that you can break out of the prison of fear. Because this is what happens when we fail, when we fall, fear creeps in. Fear sedates us. Fear immobilizes us. Fear tells us that we're inflexible. We're incapable. Fear tells us that we're irresponsible. Fear tells us that we don't want it bad enough. Fear imprisons us. I'm getting out of this place. You can't hold me here any longer. Fear says if you get up now and you try it again, you'll fail again. So stay here with me. Fear is moody and resentful and lazy and self-condemning. And your future hinges on these two words. If you will listen, these two words can be your passport out of the prison of fear. If nobody has told you this, let me tell you now. I know you failed, but get up. I know it hurts, but get up. One of the things you are gonna to have to do is get the image of failure out of your head. Stop meditating on the mess up and see yourself walking 
in the mastery of this thing. If you want your future, get up now! Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up! I know you're bleeding, but get up! I know it hurt, but get up! I know you disappointed people that believed in you, but get up and try again! Try again! Try again! Right where you are, I want you to see it differently. And this time you understand where your weaknesses are. And this time you understand your vulnerabilities. I need you to see this thing. You gotta see this thing. Failure is not final. If you can see failure differently, then the whole game changes. Now the world is your classroom because now you see a failure differently. If you're gonna get up and try this thing again, four things you gotta know right now. Hear me loud and clear. Snap out of it. Snap out of it, snap out of it, snap out of it, snap out of it. Stop telling yourself you're not good enough. Stop telling yourself you don't have what it takes. Snap out of it, snap out of it. Stop telling yourself you will fail if you try again. Snap out of it. Get up and give it everything you have. A lot of us don't get up and try again because we keep playing the failure over again and again and again. And this is why you continue to fail because that's all you see. And the moment that you change the motion picture in your head and you see something different, now you don't you no longer see the mess, you no longer see the madness, you no longer see the trauma, you see the triumph, you see what is possible, you see that you have what it takes because you saw where you failed and now you can see, okay, now now failure positions us to be instructors for the future. You become a better thinker and a better problem solver. Failure spawns creativity, motivation, and tenacity. Show me somebody who has achieved greatness. And if you pull up their past, I promise you, you'll see some failures and some lessons learned. But what happened? Failure became their instructor. All of these lessons eventually build a level of confidence and self-esteem that you would have never had had you not failed. Failure teaches us how to value and cherish wisdom and understanding. Failure teaches us how to reprioritize. Failure creates opportunity to come back. I don't want you to see failure as a disease. I want you to see it as a currency. I want you to know that there are lessons that you learn and you gain wisdom in the lesson. You gain a deeper understanding of the power of your future. There are things you will be able to buy in your future with the currency of failure, with the lesson that you learn. We, we look in this mirror and we see what's possible. We see possibility. And oftentimes we date possibility. We date destiny. We don't marry destiny. We date destiny. We date the idea, the theory of success, what I could be, what's possible. We compensate about things we want to accomplish, but then we get trapped back in the prison of fear. Fear of failure. A lot of you, you have fear of greatness. You are afraid of promotion. You are afraid of elevation. You are afraid to hit the stage. You are afraid of opportunity because you're thinking to yourself, if I get on this stage, if I get on this field, if I get on this court, if I get on this track, if I get in this room, and you give me an opportunity and I drop the ball, I won't be able to ever live it down. But listen to me, it is a lesson learned. And it is a lesson that you would have never learned had you not given it a try. Give yourself a chance to win. Give yourself a chance to win. Be the person that said, I tried. I tried, I gave it all I had, I tried, and now I can reevaluate. And now I can deliberately investigate my emotional and mental state and I can I can figure out what's wrong with me what happened why did I miss the ball why did I miss the punch why didn't I see this thing the way I could have what can I do better if we can change our perspective on failure our lives will never be the same you're gonna learn to change the movie that is playing in your head a lot of us don't get up and try again because we keep playing the failure over again and again and again and this is why you continue to fail because that's all you see and the moment that you change the motion picture in your head and you see something different now you don't you no longer see the mess you no longer see the madness you no longer see the trauma you see the triumph you see 
what is possible. You see that you have what it takes because you saw where you failed and now you can see, okay, now, now failure positions us to be instructors for the future. And see, when we get into the prison of fear, because we have fallen in an area, fear has friends. One of the chief friends of fear is doubt. And doubt cures more dreams than failure ever will. There are people who have failed in their head before they even reach the field. So I want to invite you to renounce the spirit of fear. Failure is the only opportunity to begin again. And if I'm talking to anybody that's hungry for the future, all you need is an opportunity to try again. Failing doesn't make you a failure. It's something you did. It's not who you are. In this life, there will always be obstacles. There will always be challenges. There will always be giants. What has defeated you? What is your giant? Name it. Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it insecurity? Is it doubt? Perhaps your giant or your improbable feat is a better relationship, weight loss. What has been your obstacle, your challenge, your task? What is your giant? This is the last day you are going to allow this giant to defy you. I know it hasn't been easy. It's time to win. Depression. There will be anxiety. There will be oppression. There will be stress. There will be overwhelm. Will you buckle under the pressure or will you rise to the occasion? The Bible says that David got up and ran into the army of the Philistine. He ran towards the battle. And like an eagle, it's the only bird that flies into the storm. It is time for you to fly into the next dimension of where you have been called to. What is your dream? What is your idea? What is your assignment? There is a new breed of champions emerging out of the ashes of doubt and fear. Your knees may be knocking, your palms sweaty, but the time is now to rise up and run after it. Run after your dream. Run after your idea. Run after your goal. Run after it with everything that you have. You will never have your future until you are fully persuaded that you are a carrier of everything required to fulfill your destiny. If nobody believes in you, you gotta make it up in your mind that all you have is all you need. You are going to need vision. Before you win, you're going to have to see it. I want you to see yourself winning. If you can see it, you can have it. In this life, there will always be a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, or a team who will face impossible odds. And somehow through some combination of courage, will, grit, and a mustard seed of faith, they'll manage to overcome. What I love about David is that David was not only one of the youngest, the smallest, 
the least likely. Not only was David underrated, but his weapon of choice was underrated. And there will be times in life where people will not believe in you, neither what you are carrying. I'm going to tell you the one thing that separated David from Goliath, and that was his heart for God and God's people. If you are going to defeat your giant, you are going to need heart. You must overcome what lies between the pit of your fears and the summit of your knowledge. Our Goliaths, our challenges, our giants oftentimes meet us in our valley places. It's not on the mountaintop that David fought Goliath, but it's in the valley. I tell you this, the tangible giants in our life are defeated by means that are intangible. If a man can conquer his mindset, if a man can master discipline, then there is nothing he can't win. They will tell you that your dream is too big. They will tell you that your destiny cannot be fulfilled. They will tell you it is impossible to accomplish what you have set out to accomplish. But it's not about what they say, it's about what you say. I believe that you were born to triumph over every demon, over every devil, over every addiction. You are fighting for your family. You are fighting for your legacy. What you are fighting for is bigger than you. Do not forget this. David ran toward the Philistine. David ran towards the army. Your dream, your idea, whatever goal you have, get up and run after it. You can defeat this enemy and you can have your future. If you're going to defeat this giant, if you're going to win the war, it starts on the battlefield of your mind. This is where the war is won. Over the course of your life, you will discover that the obstacle is the way, that there is great counsel in conflict. We will discover that we are most creative in the midst of adversity. So do not run from your battle, for the battle is a learning experience. You got to overcome fear. The moment that you overcome fear, then your opponent is bankrupt. There's nothing they can do. You're going to have to dispense with fear and with negative self-talk. Remember your why. It is the why that gets us to win. And it is the why that gives us the power to persevere through the how. Stop looking for the addition. Stop looking for the validation. Stop looking for everybody to agree with what you're about to do. Stop looking for everybody to understand and know this. All you have is all you need. I can see your giant of addiction running towards you with words of darkness, death, attempting to strike fear in your heart. Will you cower? Will you back down? Or will you run into battle? But I see a generation rising up against the one who called you powerless. Rising up against the fiery darts of the enemy. Rising up against the lie that have held us down far too long. Rising up against the despair in the heaviness and the chronic anxiety. I have waited my whole life for this moment. Thank you to everybody that doubted me. Knees buckling, palms sweaty, heart heavy, but I'm ready. I'm afraid, but I'm running. You will hear my feet walk in the pavement. I'm no more complacent. Here's to everybody that doubted me. Here's to everybody that stopped believing in me. Here's to everybody that counted me out. What has been tested 
what has been proven. Do something with what's in your hand. Do what you can with what you have. All you have is all you need. I don't care what the adversity has been. You have two choices. You can be unforgiving, bitter, angry, upset, and be a carrier of grief, or you can choose resilience. You can cope with what happened. You can upload the program of resilience and recover all and get back to the place where you were before the fall. Stop waiting for the storm to pass and ask yourself the question, what can I accomplish in the rain? What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? There are people all over the world who are depending on you. So our wounds become wisdom. We have a new program. It's called resiliency. The race is not given to the strong, nor the swift, but it is given to he that endureth until the end. Life doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get more forgiving. We just get stronger and we get more resilient. One thing we know is that adversity, conflict, trauma does not discriminate. We are all acquainted with pain. I don't care how many times life knocks you down, get back up and tell life, I'm supposed to be here. I belong here. Give me what's mine. When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. It's literally only when we face failure that we realize these resources are always there within us. We only need to find them to fulfill our destinies. After life has beaten you and broken you into pieces, resiliency is that gift and ability. It's the discipline to turn those pieces into a work of art. Many of you listening to me know what it's like to lose everything. You know what it's like to hit rock bottom. You know what it's like not to be supported. You know what it's like to be lied on. You know what it's like to experience emotional, relational, and psychological trauma. And it changes you because you don't know what you are made of until you have gone through something. You already know what failure feels like. You already know what it feels like to quit, to stop, to throw in the towel, to sit on the couch, to move to a substance, to put your confidence in some man or some woman, to lay idle. But do you know what it's like to give everything that you have and push and persevere? If you're going to understand the program of resiliency, we are going to have to stop running from difficult times. Stop praying that the storm will pass over you and pray to grow through the storm. Stop going around it, go through it. What you go through, you will grow through. Some fights are not won in the first round. Flat out, in the moment that you get that and you get crystal clear and you accept the fact that there are some giants that you will not defeat in the first round. You need endurance. You need stamina to reach some goals. You're not going to hit the million with the first investment. You're not going to hit the home run always at first swing. But resiliency says, I belong here and I deserve another shot. I want my opportunity. Give me my opportunity. It's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determines how your life story will develop. Rock bottom is the solid foundation to build the future. And you've lost everything. You have everything you need. Resiliency says, I tried and I failed. Resiliency has its own mentality. 
The program of resiliency says I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed again. I'm going to start again and I'm not waiting till Monday. I'm going to start right now. I tried again and again and I succeeded. See, what a lot of people don't know is that the movie, The Matrix, is, is more of a documentary than it is a movie. See, anytime Neo needed to accomplish something, they would just simply upload the program. If he needed to know Taekwondo, if he needed to know karate, if he needed to speak a different language, he would literally just upload the program to Neo's consciousness. Well, life works the same. There is a program. We all run programs. And it doesn't matter if you're at the county fair. It doesn't matter if you're at the family cookout. It doesn't matter if you're at home watching a movie in the basement or on vacation with your, your wife or your husband. We're all running a program. And you have default settings within your subconscious. And we have Many of us deal with laziness. Many of us deal with anger. Many of us deal with frustration. And these are different programs that we run. And so now you need to deliberately investigate and examine your internal man and ask yourself, what are the programs I'm running? Because for many of us, laziness is a program. Procrastination is a program. Anger and anguish and bitterness and unforgiveness is a program. And if you're going to hang on to grief and anger and unforgiveness because of the lawsuit or because of the jail time or because of the record that you think somebody messed up or the messy divorce you are going through or the job you lost or the business that tanked, I don't care what the adversity has been, you have two choices. You can be unforgiving, bitter, angry, upset and be a carrier of grief or you can choose resilience. You can cope with what happened. You can upload the program of resilience and recover all and get back to the place where you were before the fall. Get up! Stop waiting for the storm to pass and ask yourself the question, what can I accomplish in the rain? What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? What can I build under these conditions? Resilience is based on compassion for ourselves as well as compassion for others. The future is hinged on your resiliency. Your family is depending on you to put in the work. Your friends, your circles of influence, your mentors, there are people all over the world who are depending on you. So our wounds become wisdom because our perspective, we have a new program. It's called resiliency. So are you willing to lose sleep? Are you willing to put the work in? Are you fully persuaded? Are you determined? I don't care how many times life knocks you down. Get back up and tell life, I'm supposed to be here. I belong here. Give me what's mine! When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. It's literally only when we face failure that we realize these resources are always there within us. We only need to find them to fulfill my destinies. After life has beaten you and broken you into pieces, resiliency is that gift and ability. It's the discipline to turn those pieces into a work of art. share a few things with you that hopefully will help the pain to subside. You, know, you can read them if you want. You can 
read them again later if you feel like it. But honestly, man, if I spend all this time typing this out to you, and you don't allow it to be a tender to your fire, well, you're just letting us both down. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do anything. But you get to choose. I'm gonna give you four rules that if you can obey, if you can make these rules a command, and I believe not only will the pain subside, but perhaps transformation could take place on the inside. Rule number one, there are no more zero days. What is a zero day? A zero day is when you don't do a single solitary thing towards whatever your dream or goal is in this life. So I want you to make a conscious decision that there will be no more zero days. Now, I'm not saying you gotta kill yourself, but the point I'm trying to make is that you need to promise yourself that your new program, your new system, will be a life lived of no more zero days. This means that when the day is over and you look up and it's 11.58 at night, you did something. No more zero days. I mean, I don't care if it was one push-up, one sit-up, one page of the book, you feel me? But just make a decision that there will be no more zero days. You see, when you're in the vortex of being bummed and you are trapped in the pattern of self-sabotaging behavior, you get used to it. And the only way you are going to break out is with a massive string of consistent non-zero days. That's rule number one. Rule number two is that you are going to have to be grateful to the three U's. Call it mumbo jumbo if you want to. Newsflash. The three U's are the past you, the present you, and the future you. And if you want to love somebody and have someone to love you back, you got to learn to love yourself. And the three U's are key. You got to be grateful for the past you, for the positive things you've done. And do favors for the future you, like you would for your best friend. You feeling bad today? Stop for a second and think of a good decision you made yesterday. That salad, that fish, that protein shake, instead of a burger or fries. Did you save money in your past to buy something that resonated with you? And thank the past you. Are you currently saving toward that dream or that goal you have? Or that improbable feat? Then you need to be grateful for the present you. The last part of the three U's is... You gotta love your future self. You gotta do your future self a favor. I know you might be tired. You may be addicted to a video game or... A television series. Not today, present self. This one's for future me. No PlayStation, no Xbox, no distraction. I don't care if it's one more push-up or one more sit-up or one more page in the book. You see the cycle of doing something for someone else, future you, and thanking someone for the good in your life, past you is the key to building gratitude and productivity. Don't doubt me. Over time, you should spread that gratitude to others who have helped you on your path. Rule number three, you are gonna have to forgive yourself. I mean it. Maybe you have all the know-how, the money, the ability, strength, and talent to do whatever you want to do. But let's say you still don't do it. Now you're going to give yourself a tough time for not doing what you need to do. Pick your head up. Being disappointed in yourself causes you to be less productive. If you can forgive yourself, you can be healed from the past, equipped for the present, and cast vision for the future. 
you owe you, forgive you, and get on with the rest of your life. Rule number four is the easiest, and it's three words, exercise and books. That's it. Pretty standard advice. But when you exercise daily, you actually get smarter. You get crystal clear about the road ahead. When you exercise, you position yourself to win the war. When you exercise and you push yourself, you attest the limitations of your soul and you will become crystal clear, both internally and externally, that all you have is all you need. As for books, almost everything we've ever thought or felt or gone through or wanted or wanted to know how to do has been figured out by someone else. So get some books. Read Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Read Emotional Intelligence. Read From Good to Great. Read Thinking Fast and Slow. Read books that will help you understand. Read books that will get you crystal clear on your future. Read the Body Weight Fitness Reddit and incorporate it into your workouts. Reading gets you to the next level faster. One last piece of advice though. If you wake up tomorrow and you can't remember the four rules, I just laid it out for you. Read this again. Watch this video again. Don't forget, nine zero days as much as you can. The three U's, gratitude and favor, forgiveness, exercise, and books. And this is how you can dominate and get an unfair competitive advantage in the marketplace and in the game of life. And this is the road to self-improvement physically, emotionally, mentally. You got this, man. No more zero days. There is a light inside of every one of us, an ember that burns and begs us to become more than what we have ever been. It's our aspirations that must become our allies. I noticed that everything that I've accomplished over the course of my life, I accomplished with a new set of beliefs and a new set of habits. I noticed I was able to make things happen when I destroyed the door in the room. See, I don't care what your goal is. It could be relationships. It could be to lose weight. It could be to make more money. It could be to become something nobody in your family has ever been. The moment that you destroy the door, the way out in the room of your dream, that's when you make it happen. What you do while you are in pain will we'll echo, echo through the ages. Scrape the grill of your past and get all that junk out of there. Of every memory of every failure, you need to unplug from everybody and everything that is telling you that you cannot have your future, that you cannot have this goal, that you can't do what's on your heart to do. You gotta unplug, 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 unplug. unplug. 
There are too many people in your life that keep telling you that you are not qualified, that you don't have what it takes, that you will never be able to accomplish because your resume ain't long enough, because you don't have the experience, because you are unfit. And so you got to unplug from all the negative voices. You got to unplug from everything and everybody that's telling you you cannot have that dream, that you are not qualified to have that dream. You got to unplug. You got to unplug. It may hurt because there are some people that you're going to have to let go of. There are some people that, that can't come with you to the next level. They're not qualified to fly at the frequency that you're flying at. They cannot come. And you got to get in touch with you. See, you can't have the dream unless you know you. Now, everybody wants this dream. Everybody wants this lifestyle. But they don't know themselves. And so you need to take some physical evaluation, some emotional and psychological evaluation, spiritual evaluation. And you got to figure out, okay, what works and, and, and what doesn't? And, and what are my boundaries and what are my limitations and what am I capable of and what do I need to work on? And then you need to connect with the people that believe in your dream. Life moves at the speed of your relationships, connections and circles. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to forgive yourself. You need to reprioritize your activities. Everybody wants the dream to come true, but nobody wants to reprioritize their activities. Nobody wants to hack into their habitual nature and build new habits that are going to give you the future that you seek that you seek after. If not now, then when? Dream big, start small. You gotta dream big, start small, act now. Dream, dream big, big, start, start small, small, act, act now. now. Stop waiting for the temperature to change. Stop waiting for your feelings to be in check. Stop waiting for everything to line up. It's never going to line up. It's never going to be perfect. You just got to jump. You just have to jump. There are no roses without rain. If you can remember that, then you will always see adversity as advantage and obstacle as opportunity. Know this, that your process may be messy. But your mess will become your message. So what is your why? Because if your why is powerful enough, then you can persevere through the process. What is it? Find it. Define it. Be reminded that you can, you will, you must never give up. The actions that you take, the moves that you make will, will echo, echo throughout, throughout the, the ages. ages as there is a generation of people who are attached to your why. And if you don't succeed, they'll never believe. So make it happen. Persistence, consistency, resilience, courage, establishing your priorities, mastering self-awareness, maintaining focus, believing, that your help is coming because if your dream only requires you, it's not big enough. And I know it's hard right now, and I know you feel like quitting, but you gotta understand there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Stop lying to yourself and telling yourself that you have time. See, the greatest lie that you have believed far too long is that you have time. You have time that there is a tomorrow that that you can drag your feet and you can you can crawl sometimes you got to run that kid you can't crawl towards some dreams you can't walk towards some dreams some dreams you got to run towards you got to run baby run 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 after it run like there's no tomorrow run like you know you deserve it run like you know that there is nobody else that can attain it run after it for many of you, defeat has traumatized you and it has left an image in your head and this is why you won't go after it. I want you to erase the face of defeat and embrace the process. Now I know for many of you, that's like a bad word. You hate process, but see the process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end and in order for you to reach your end that end is going to have to be extremely valuable 
in your eyes. The process is muddy. The process is murky. The process is dark. The process is cold. The process is going to leave you in places where you're going to feel like you have been abandoned, like nobody believes in you, nobody supports you. When you don't see a light at the end of your tunnel, you got to remember the light that is burning inside of you that nobody is able to put out. There is not a person on this planet that can stop you. There is not a person on this planet that can puncture your potential if you could just get through the process. Just get through the process. It's muddy, it's bloody, but it's worth it. At the end of the day, it's worth it. No sunrise without a sunset. There is no one like you in all of the earth. There is no one that can do what you can do. You are the only option. You are the only play. Nobody else is going to be able to do this. Know this, that your process may be messy, but your mess will become your message. So what is your why? Because if your why is powerful enough, then you can persevere through the process. What is it? Find it. Define it. Be reminded that you can, you will, you must never Never give up. up. The truth of the matter is, how are you so emotionally injured, so mentally drained, so physically fatigued that you have allowed your dream, your destiny to take a back seat to this excuse that you don't have what it takes, that you're not smart enough, that you're not tall enough, that you're not wide enough, that you're not deep enough, that you're not connected enough, that you don't know enough people. You keep comparing yourself to that person and this person. When will the excuses stop? When will you see your purpose bigger than your excuse? I don't know your name. But I know you have a dream. I don't, I don't know where you're from or where you're listening to me. You may be listening to me in your closet, your bedroom, the gym, the car, the bus, the train, the plane. I don't know where you're going, but I know you are going somewhere. You've got a destination. People that make excuses are not connected to their destination. They don't have an end game. They don't have a goal. You have allowed yourself to become a weak link covered under the blanket of excuses, but I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that has a dream, and if you've made your excuses bigger than your dream, the time is now to apply pressure. It may not be easy, but it's not impossible. This is not a I feel like it today. This is not an I'm motivated for a week. This is an every single day mentality. You may have to work three times. You may have to lose sleep. You may have to go to college and raise five children and still maintain your marriage and work your side hustle. I don't know what your story is, but if you will keep a no excuse mentality, then the sky is not your limit. The sky is your starting point. This is an every single day mentality. I never get turned off. Every single day, I want my destiny. I want my dream. When somebody is in love with who they've been called to become, what they've been called to fulfill, what they've been destined to do, there is no day off. There are no light. Listen, I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I can never get turned off. Every single day, I'm giving everything I have. That's how big my dream is. And so there's no excuse, there's no pain, there's no dilemma, there are no speed bumps, there's no distraction that can turn me off. I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I want this thing every single day. If it's important to you, you're going to find a way. You won't have to look for a resource. You will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. If we can just keep the effort going, the excuse is irrelevant. You gotta be stronger than your excuses. Excuses don't get results. Now we've gotta go through the process of being stronger than our excuses.
We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot. We got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. Truth is, everybody's got purpose. Right? Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got something they have to pass or achieve or become. But we are generationally programmed to love convenience. And the truth of the matter is, it is so convenient to make an excuse. I want to give you just a few things that you can do to help you to stop making excuses. To help you to stop habitually gravitating to the place called convenience. If you can hear my voice, you've got work to do. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You've got a purpose to walk into. You've got a test to pass. You've got dots to connect, rooms to walk in, stages to stand on, and tables to sit down on. We all want to do something. We all want to be somebody. We all want to go somewhere. And if, we're, if these things are going to happen, We've got to stop habitually gravitating to excuse. Number one, you gotta stop comparing yourself to everybody else. Rule number one, kill the comparison game. Oh, well, I don't, I don't do it like them, and I, I don't say it like them, and I don't, I'm not as tall as them, and I'm not as strong as them, and I, I don't have the money that they have, I don't have the resources that they have. I don't. Well, the, the, the reason why I, I, I couldn't do it. Because my parents weren't there for me. The, the reason why I didn't get to go to college on a full ride because my coach, he didn't create the highlight reel for, for the sports scholarship. The, the reason why. And so we, we were just programmed to blame everybody else. When will you look in the mirror and stop comparing yourself to everybody else? We compare ourselves to the way people look. We compare our stories to their stories and our relationship to their relationship. Every single day, the excuses that we make are like a warm blanket pooled over us, covering up the underlying issue of fear, the spirit, the personality of fear. The truth is that the reason why you haven't done it is because you're afraid. Maybe if you could just listen to this a couple times, maybe you'll stop making so many excuses because the excuse is nothing but a cosmetic. It's makeup. It's a blanket. It's a convenience that we habitually gravitate to because it just makes us feel better. But the underlining issue, the underlining cancer, the inflammation is fear. We're afraid. We're afraid that if we give our best, the best isn't good enough. We're afraid because we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. We're afraid that we won't be seen. We're afraid that people will change if we evolve. We're afraid that maybe we'll lose our friends if we began to shift our thinking. You have to have a marriage mentality when it comes to achieving what it is that's on the inside of you. What it is that's in your head to manifest it and hold it in your hands. You have to have a marriage mentality. The problem with many of you is you keep dating the idea, the potential of focus and success and determination and discipline. You're only disciplined once a week. You're only determined twice a week. You're only, you're only enthusiastic about the journey on Sundays or Wednesdays. Once you make a covenant, you know what? I'm going to commit to this. You're going to put the blood, you're going to put the sweat, you're going to put the tears in, you're going to lose sleep, you're going to go days without eating, you're going to do whatever it takes to make the sacrifices necessary to manifest. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong! Keep loving those who have lied on you. Keep blessing those who have cursed you. Don't be bitter. Don't be frustrated. Listen, just remain faithful behind the scenes. Promotion is coming. Stages and opportunities are being prepared right now as you sacrifice in secret, as you put the work in in the dark room, as you do what is required to hold in your hand what you see in your hand. I remember being on my job with no possibility of a future. And I will never forget the moment that a man walked up to me 
and looked me in my eyes and told me that this was the best I would be able to do. And I came to the resolve in that very moment that greatness would be my new norm. What he said to me hit me hard. It was a metaphoric, massive blow to my face. But like a wise man once said, you gotta pick your head up like your nose is bleeding. And right where they left you for dead, elevate where he told me I would retire from, that this was the end of the line. I came to the resolve that I would not believe the lie. I could hear it in the air that the voice of destiny would reside in the place where he wanted me to die. I made the decision to fight for my future. You will not pause. You will progress. You will not expire. You will evolve. You will not crumble in the midst of crises. You may be neck deep in what seems to be a catastrophic storm of chaos, but I pray that in this moment, you will find the calm, the peace, the hope, the faith, the courage, the expectancy you need to live and not die. To move up and not stay where you are. You get what you see. And that is the formula for expectancy. Your expectation is what you believe is about to happen. And for many of you, you have been so traumatized by the past that your expectations are so diminished your expectations have been dying a slow death because of the trauma of the past you expect nothing and so you feel like if I don't expect anything then you can't hurt me if I have no expectation on you then you cannot disappoint me if you are going to win the fight for the future you are going to have to have a high expectation it was Kobe Bryant that said everything negative, pressure, and challenges is all an opportunity for me to rise. It's crises that reveals what we are comprised of. And I ask you the question, are you praying the darkness away or are you becoming the highest version of yourself in the midst of the darkness? You know, when you find yourself standing in the middle of trial, tribulation, scarcity, and uncertainty. There is a process from flapping to flight. How you process pain will determine your future. I need you to fight for the future. Let that sink in for a minute. You are not your crises. You are not what you are going through. What are you expecting the outcome to be? Because you can't change what has happened. However, you can change what will happen. Your responsibility is once you've gone from flapping to flight is to protect your progress to protect your territory. You gotta get a real boss-like mentality with your territory. All the ground that you gain, protect your territory. I ask you the question, when are you going to stop thinking that you are what you are going through? When we step into elevation and we get that, what I like to call that bird's eye view, we gain a greater perspective when we zoom out. And too many of you are guilty of becoming what you are going through. You are not what you are going through. See, in the game of life, those who have an elevated perspective will inherit the future. And it is time for you to fight for your future. How bad do you want the future? I want you to let that question sink in. Because the day you stop quacking with ducks and start flying with the eagles, all of a sudden everything changes but you know for many of you 
You are addicted to the company of the duck. I need you to scrupulously examine the landscape of your relationships. Because if nobody told you, let me be the first one to tell you, separation precedes elevation. It's a lot of people in your life that are holding you down, that are holding you back. There are some people you are going to have to let go of in order to elevate above the noise, above the dysfunction, to be a light shining brilliantly through the darkness, above the uncertainty, high above all murky waters, beyond the pain of the test and trial. Elevated people will always ask themselves, what did I learn in the midst of it all? King David said in Psalms 119.71, it was good for me that I had been afflicted, that I might learn thy statues. And when you're stepping in this space, in this realm, in this world of elevation, you are not asking God, why am I in pain? You are asking God, what am I getting ready to become? With high expectation, elevated people will ask themselves, what am I getting ready to become? And what will I learn in the midst of this? While the world is in panic, while the world is perturbed, while the world is puzzled, you pray and plan your next move. Don't fear the dark. Ask yourself, what did you learn in it? Adversity is our advantage. Decide to come out of this better. Find yourself in this elevated place. Everybody wants it. We want promotion. We want the upgrade. We want advancement. We want to move up. We want to have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. My attention has been arrested by the conversation of the bird. You know, oftentimes learning to fly means falling from the nest and making that long trip back to it. And some birds never make it back to the top. But for the ones that do, once they learn to spread their wings, the game changes. Once they learn to start to spread their wings and then they begin to flap those wings, then all of a sudden their life goes to that next level. And I think a lot of you are stuck. You've spread your wings, but you're afraid to flap them because you're worried about what people are going to say about you. The baby bird don't care what anybody says about what it looks like in its process because process precedes the breakthrough. There is something that is burning inside of us to go to the next level to see this one thing that I'm about to bring to your attention. And if you're going to see it, if you're going to see breakthrough, then you are going to have to be okay with the process that is required. The preceding action and thoughts that are required to see this breakthrough. The baby bird spreads its wings, then it flaps its wings and it flaps and flaps and flaps until the flapping becomes flight and a lot of you are in this season called flapping and you're like man this isn't flying and you're looking at everybody and you're comparing yourself to everybody that's flying and you're diminishing your process you're diminishing your flapping season get through your flapping season with grace and faith see faith is an invitation to the future. Faith is the door. It is the pathway. It is the corridor to the future. And if you are going to fight for the future, you've got to fight with faith. Get through your flapping season. Get through your flapping season. I know you got tears in your eyes, but get through your flapping season and fight for flight. Because eventually, the flapping turns in to flight. Hustling is a mentality. It's a code of conduct. The hustler's mentality is, how can this challenge be my opportunity? And what can I learn? The, the hustler thinks differently. All roads lead back to the mentality. If you're going to win the fight for your future, you're going to have to prepare your mindset for the workload. 
You can't be afraid to change. You gotta beat on your craft every day. I don't have permission to stop. All roads lead back to your mindset, your mentality. The way that you see this thing is going to determine your future. A hustler is committed and consistent. And so this is not a Monday through Friday thing. It's a Monday through Monday thing. Every single day, I'm beating on my crab. Every single day, I'm looking to become more than I was yesterday. I am not in competition with anybody. The hustler says the only person I am competing with is who I used to be yesterday. The hustler says, I don't have a second to waste. The hustler does not waste time. Put the hours in. No days off mentality. A lot of people want to lose weight. A lot of people want to see transformation. A lot of people want to see something different. It's like if I don't put the work in, I'm not going to have muscles. And so the hustler knows how to prioritize their time. The hustler knows how to lock in. You got to lock in. Whatever it is that you're setting out to do is going to require a different version of yourself. If you're going to manifest in your hands what you see in your head, then you're going to have the courage, the confidence, the self-belief, and the self-determination to go out every single day and make it happen. Every single day somebody's doing something you're not willing to do to secure the future. And so when you go into the day with that mindset, that list will shrink. The list of people that are outworking you, it'll shrink. So you gotta dedicate to creative time. You need an army to fulfill destiny. So you gotta be connected. You gotta grow your network. And all that you do, and your failures, and your successes, learn from them. Note takers are the money makers. Hustlers take notes. It's difficult to manifest what is not written down. Put me in a room with a hundred people. I'm gonna take more notes than them. I'm gonna listen better. I'm gonna have more fun. I'm gonna learn more. I'm gonna talk less. And so the movement that we see across the earth from the high achievers, the successful entrepreneurs, those who are launching businesses and organizations, it all starts with their mindset, their mentality, the psychology of a champion is just different. Hustlers are just wired differently. And so the hustler knows how to prioritize their time. The hustler knows how to lock in. You gotta lock in. You have to put the hours in. You may have to raise children, cultivate your marriage, and work your side hustle all at the same time. Everybody knows if you don't go to the gym, if you don't get on the treadmill, put the cardio in, if you don't hit the weights and lift, you're not going to walk around with the physique that you see in your head. It's going to remain a conversation, a vision, a dream. How do you manifest what you see in your head to hold it in your head is that you got to have that hustler's mentality. The hustler is going to outwork everybody in the room. The hustler says, if me and you are on the treadmill, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to get off first, or I'm going to die trying to beat you. Because I'm completely sold out to the dream, the vision that I'm carrying. The difference between game changers and city shakers, and the people that just talk about it, the people that just dream about it, have visions about it, fill notebooks about it. The difference between the two, number one is that they are absolutely clear on what it is that they've been called to do and what it is they've been called to build and who it is they've been called to become. Number two, a hustler is committed and consistent. The hustler's mindset is that if I'm going to have something, I've got to first become something. And so hustling can't be a weekend thing, right? It can't be I'm gonna do it this Friday, I'm gonna do it Monday. Okay, I'm motivated on Monday. It's a government, it's a lifestyle. This is what I do every single day and I don't have an on and off switch. The first thing on a hustler's radar 
is not the opportunity, it's the mindset. Because if I get the opportunity with the wrong mindset, I won't maintain the opportunity. I'll lose it. And the hustler understands the power of retention. Okay? So the hustler eliminates distractions. <laughs> the hustler says, I'm beating on my crab. The hustler says, I'm going after it. The hustler says, I can't afford to miss this moment. I can't afford to overlook this critical time, this crucial opportunity. I'm gonna give it everything I have, period. When you've got this hustler's mentality, you're not looking for a handout. You just know you have to outwork everybody in the room. You gotta put the work in after hours. You're not wasting your time being entertained. You're not wasting your time watching TV all day. You're not wasting your time complaining about what you don't have. The hustler has already come to the conclusion that if they don't have something, they have to become. So you gotta prepare your mindset for what it is that you're going after. If you have to listen to this a thousand times, understand how hustlers are wired the psychology of a champion. Just keep moving, keep hustling, keep grinding until you no longer have to introduce yourself. Destiny is calling, even now. Many of you listening to me have been beautifully equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. But I want to give you a new word for change, and that word is evolution. And you are either going to evolve or expire. See, everything changes. The economy changes. Relationships changes. We change mentally and emotionally and physically, and you are either dying or you are either living. Every time you made a change, you got hurt. And so this is why when you hear the word change, there is a mental block. You cannot change because you have equated change with pain. Every time you have changed, you feel pain. You stepped out of one relationship to another and you feel pain. You leave one neighborhood to another and you feel pain. You go from one job to another and you feel the fire of transition. So every time you hear the word change, you see pain. Every time they say it's time to make a difference, every time they say you need to go from this place to that place, all you can see is blood in your eyes, all you can feel is the blood and trauma in your mouth, hypnotized by the pain of change. Evolve your belief system. Change is not pain. See change as growth. See change as transformation. See change as evolution. See change as necessary. See change as critical. See change as inevitable. And the more and more you start to see that change is not pain, you're gonna see transformation. Your life's gonna experience a quantum leap because now, even though in your childhood, you were traumatized because of change. Your history is not your destiny. See, those of you who will evolve, who are willing to evolve, you will inherit the future. Those of you who are willing to take everything you do to the next level, you will inherit the future. It is the individual who is willing to become more. Change is inevitable. And you are either changing for the worse or changing for the better. You decide. Change is an invitation to the future. If I can change, I can have my future. Another reason why people hate change is because not only do they see change as pain, but all they see change is as failure. And it's because every time you've made a change, you have failed. And you have to start identifying change with a new layer of belief. 
People tell me all the time, it's hard to get wealthy. It's hard to grind. It's hard to be focused. How do you even do these speeches? It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. You either go work for it, you're gonna sit there and let life knock you down and dare you to get back up. So I see the privilege. I see the moment. I see change as pleasure. I see change as transformation. I see change as evolution. I see change as beauty, brilliance. I see change as the future. I see change as necessary. I see that if I don't change, there is a generation of people who are gonna be stuck in the same place if I don't evolve. See, the marketplace rewards those who have evolved. The marketplace rewards those who have become more valuable. You will be rewarded for the pain. Cry in secret, plead in secret, but in public you'll be rewarded. And if everything you listen to goes over your head, you are going to miss your moment and stay living in the midst of the madness. The madness of impossibility, the lie. Somebody lied to you and told you that it was impossible. Every time somebody told me I could not do something, I had a decision that I had to make in order to achieve what they said was impossible. The power is wrapped in the truth and in the power of their perspective. It's wrapped in your capacity, your ability to believe in a dream even if nobody believes in you. Destiny is calling. Your perspective can either become your prison or your passport. It can either arrest you or release you. In 1903, it was the Wright brothers that defied the laws of gravity. And if you know anything about gravity, gravity will pull you down and keep you down. It will stop you from flight. It will stop you in your tracks. If you believe in something, metaphorically speaking, gravity will hold you down, it will hold you back, and it will dare you to fight. Your perspective can either be your prison or your plane. I don't know about you, but today, I made the decision to defy the laws of gravity. The first successful heavier than air powered aircraft was designed and built by the Wright brothers. They flew it four times on December 17, 1903, near Keel Devil Hills, about four miles. I believe possibility is destiny, and it is fear that keeps us arrested and apprehended by the spirit of impossibility. I'm gonna tell you this right now, and nobody else is gonna tell you this. Impossible is a spirit, and you've got to arrest that spirit or it will arrest you. Impossibility is like a soda fountain. The easy way out, the path of least resistance because to say something is impossible, to give up, to cop out, to fill your cup of carbonated excuses, it tastes good, but it doesn't sit well as it goes down into your system. To remove the two letters is the grit of existence, the binding faith of hope to your chest and letting your heart beat. You gotta rewrite the code, you gotta rewrite the script. Calling all reformers, I'm calling all innovators, I'm calling all game changers, I'm calling all world shakers, I'm calling all city shifters. I'm calling everybody that has an inkling of faith in themselves. I'm calling everybody. You will inherit the future. We gotta rewrite the code in our soul because it's a matter of the soul. It's a matter of the will. 
people that have a will to win are the ones who win, who win. These are the people that see the future. These are the people that see not where the hockey puck is, but they see where the hockey puck is going. And that's the type of person that we all need to evolve to become. I, I learned years ago that the difference between people that get things done and people that do not is sheer willpower. Out of all the motivational speeches you have heard, how much of it have you retained and applied to your life? Because understanding the power and the difference between what is impossible and what is possible, it all comes back to your perspective and your capacity. If your why is big enough, then your will will be powerful enough to persevere through the how. You're not looking for resources when you have a will. You become resourceful. And that's the difference between people that see this thing as possible and people that do not. It comes down to one thing, and that is your will. So you don't want it bad enough. You don't want it bad enough. That's why you can't get it done. And so the how intimidates you. And, and, and the what boxes you in. We're more concerned about collaboration than character. I think we need to come back to a place where we're examining ourselves as an individual before a people. We make the people better when we deal with the person. You got to deal with the person. You got to deal with you. It's always going to be impossible to you if you don't see the power of your will and the power of your why. There are key components and key ingredients in the recipe of a student mentality. Number one, you need to be disciplined. The future is very expensive and only those who are carriers of discipline can inherit the future. I need you to stay motivated. I don't care if you have to listen to me a thousand times, I need you to stay motivated. And I need that motivation to mature into discipline. I need you to be self-aware. So I need you to remember that you are always learning. In life, you are always learning. And I need you to believe in yourself. I need you to see yourself capable, lovable, and unconditionally worthy of your future. Turn your pain into progress. I need you to see yourself. See yourself. One of the things that many students lack is vision. You got to see yourself before you get there. You have to hear yourself telling yourself thank you. I need you to open up your ears. Open up your ears. Because the you from the future is telling you thank you. Thank you for not giving up when you wanted to give up. Thank you for not being depressed. Thank you for not allowing the brokenness to eat your progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got this. It's going to get hard sometimes, I'm telling you right now. It's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. Maybe you're listening to me right now, you want to lose weight, or you, you're trying to pass the final exam, or maybe there's just this feat that seems as though it is impossible. Turn your pain into progress. Turn your pain into progress. I need you to be uncomfortable with average. I need you to be allergic to average. I need you to come to the end of yourself. So many people are depending on you. A student is hardworking. A student is mentally tough. Have the ability to adapt. Have a character. Consistency. Demonstrate courage on the daily. Stay motivated. Stay positive. Earn your respect. Have a winning attitude. Breathe. Compete. Make no excuses, set goals, practice great habits, stay focused. You want your future? You gotta outwork everybody on that field. You gotta outwork everybody in the room. You gotta learn how to perform under pressure. You gotta leave it all out on the field. <laughs> everybody want the future, but everybody wants to be average. There are going to be times when you feel like you're losing your mind and you study for hours and you're going to take an exam and you will not pass. A student is resilient. A student is disciplined. A student is committed. A student is consistent even when they don't want to be. 
because the cycle of depression needs to end with you the cycle of not enough needs to end with you the lack and the dysfunction and the anxiety and all of these things that your family and your father and your mother have gone through you have to keep a student mentality I studied and I failed the exam I studied and I failed the test and life is an uphill war and it is filled with tests and exams in critical moments where you are going to have to dig deep inside of yourself and ask yourself why why did you start in the first place and what was the emotion the feeling what was the science and the psychology behind the decision that you made and nine times out of ten I can tell you why you started you started because you were hungry hunger is the feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by a lack of food coupled with a desire to eat how hungry are you when you feel like throwing in the towel when you feel like surrendering everything you work for remember why you started remember how you felt when you started you were hungry when you want to let go when you want to surrender when you want to stop when you're ready to quit when you have failed and failed again let me remind you what got you here hunger got you here a strong desire got you here you were desperate to break curses in your family you were desperate to break the cycle of poverty and depression you were desperate hunger got you here remember this every dream requires discipline every dream requires discipline you can travel the world and study students and their behaviors and their mindsets there is a science behind achievement and when you study the most successful students in the world we find that they are responsible they are motivated they are self-managed they are self-aware they have a long-lasting student mentality even after they have passed the test because they understand that life is a test and in life there are ups and there are downs and so accept the responsibility see yourself as primarily responsible for your outcomes and your experiences you are going to need discipline motivation will help you get started but discipline is going to keep you on the road to your destiny you got to be self-motivated you got to find purpose in what you do by discovering personally meaningful goals and dreams if you're going to be a successful student if you're going to come out on top you've got to start managing your time you plan and you take action in pursuit of your goals and dreams so let me tell you something everybody has a dream that there is a behavior that must follow your belief system remember this behavior follows belief if you have not been able to change your behavior to match your dream then you need to go back and examine your belief because 10 times out of 10 if you can't change your behavior to match your dream then you don't believe when somebody believes everything changes the time is coming where you are going to feel like giving up but you're going to have to remember why you started you got to dig deep and learn how to create possibilities for yourself when nobody gives you an opportunity you have to turn your mess into your message study strategy over the years and achieve the spirit of the warrior today is a victory over yourself of yesterday tomorrow is your victory over lesser men there is a student mentality in all of us that must be tapped into a student is resilient a student is disciplined it is only through discipline that you will experience the freedom 
of a warrior. A student never surrenders. See, the strategy is the plan. The strategy, the game plan, the plan of action, the recipe, the how must be studied before the first step is taken. I am convinced that so many of us lose because of what we were not willing to study. We must grow a discipline to deliberately investigate what we are getting ready to enter into. We must be calculated as we enter into new seasons, into new relationships. This is the road to becoming a warrior. An experienced, skilled, and calculated soldier. A fighter, a game changer, somebody who refuses to stay down. This is somebody who is set apart from those who operate in the realm of normalcy. This is somebody who is above and beyond. We got a bit of a work ethic to go after it. A student is a disciple, and a disciple is disciplined. Disciplined to achieve the spirit of the warrior. They are perfectly positioned for victory daily. Discipline is an invitation out of normalcy. A man who studies is a man who is allergic to average. So you are a warrior, and you don't even know it. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. After today, everything is about to change. Because change starts with you. To understand this is to know the difference between men and lions. You must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. And in this very moment, all you have is all you need. See, somebody lied to you and told you that life is about acquiring more to move forward. And what if I told you that getting to the top of the mountain was not about acquiring more, but about becoming more? That if you can become, then you will find your authentic path to the top. Everybody wants to go to the top, but nobody wants to discover new ways to climb there. Find your authenticity. Discover your identity. We're all told, if you want to get to the top, follow the leader. But that is a broken mentality. Yes, leaders are necessary, but we must be fully aware when we have been called to lead, to blaze our own trail, to discover a new way. It's daunting, it's exhausting to get to the top. But there is more than one way and you will discover that way by not acquiring. So it is not the more that you get, the faster you will go. It is the more you become, the quicker you will elevate. And so getting to the top of the mountain has more to do with becoming than acquiring. What is your mountain? What is your trial? Who is the giant standing in front of you? Name it and defeat it. The climb is just as important as the arrival. The top is the end game, but the process is what will make you. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone, at the end of your ego and your insecurities. But when you come to the end of yourself and the beginning of the understanding of our world, why we are here and what is our purpose, then all of a sudden everything changes. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. The world is vast. Over 7.5 billion people walk the face of this planet. There is so much here. Creation, the antelope, the trees, the mountains, the stars, people from everywhere.
every nation, in every tongue. We have economy. We have industry. We have technology. We are more advanced than ever before. So take a moment and agree never to self-sabotage yourself. No more self-condemnation. That you cease to see the opportunities in this world. How beautiful our planet is. To think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world is an invitation out of your ego, out of your insecurities, out of what you think you cannot do. It is to look beyond your program. It is to think of your legacy. It is to think of what you will leave behind. It is to think of your contribution and your impact. Even in this moment, in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, ask yourself the question, what can I contribute? You see, conflict is necessary. Trial is, is needed. It causes us to create, to be proactive, to be inventive. It moves us to become pioneers. What type of mark will you leave in the earth? What will be your legacy? Man has always been haunted by the vastness of eternity. And so we ask ourselves, when we are long gone, will our names remain? You're broke? Welcome to the club. You're scared? Welcome to the club. You're not sure? Welcome to the club. There is nothing, I mean literally nothing, you are facing right now that the great ones didn't face before. It ain't just you dealing with it. Everybody got to deal with insecurities. Everybody got to deal with fear. And you might have to say, I'm going to get through this over and over and over until you believe it. The great ones fight through. Everyone has challenges and setbacks. That's a part of the journey. Can you please do you a favor and get out of your head? You're still wishing and you're still hoping for it. You're still planning. Like you've been planning this for five years. Get out of your own head. Because once you taste that success, I want you to keep eating. Once you get success on your lips, I want you to keep drinking. Once you understand the keys of success, it's not the end, it is only the beginning. Because you understand, once you get that breakthrough, you finally understand what you're capable of. Purpose is bigger than the pain, and the promise is bigger than the process. And I know it's hard right now, and I know you feel like quitting, but you gotta understand there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Stop lying to yourself and telling yourself that you have time. See, the greatest lie that you have believed far too long is that you have time. You have time that there is a tomorrow that, that you can drag your feet and you can, you can crawl. Sometimes you gotta run. You can't crawl towards some dreams. You can't walk towards some dreams. Some dreams you gotta run towards. You gotta run, baby. Run, 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 run after it. Run like there's no tomorrow. Run like you know you deserve it. Run like you know that there is nobody else that can attain it. Run after it. You got a lot more to do. All you gotta do is get out your way. All you gotta do is believe. And all you gotta do, my friend, is to start and I mean start now there is a boat that you're gonna have to take to this island and when you get to that island there are many mountains you must climb but in order to get to the top of that mountain you gotta burn the boat you came to that island on and see for many of you you keep giving yourself options. You keep giving yourself ways out. There is a mentality that must be adapted in order for you to win. It's called, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. 
You got to start now. The gift of now is powerful. This is a day that you have never seen before. And this is also a day that you will never see again. You said the same stuff last year. Broke, that was your excuse last year. I'm too busy. That's a good one, but not good enough. Why are you busy and running from your purpose? Nobody will help me. Woe is me. Nobody will support me. Honestly, until you start for real, until you launch, there ain't nothing to support. People are tired of hearing you talking about it. We can't help you. We can't support you until you get started. Start now. No time to wait. You have a purpose. It is imperative that you do not waste the time that you have been given. Stop talking about your imperfections. Start now, ain't nobody perfect because you'll never be perfect. Start now, you got haters with all your haters. I've been telling you since the 90s, if you don't have haters, your vision is too small. You gotta dream big, start small, act now. Dream big, start small, act now. See, stop waiting for the temperature to change. Stop waiting for your feelings to be in check. Stop waiting for everything to line up. It's never gonna line up, it's never gonna be perfect. You just gotta jump. You just have to jump. You have to believe in yourself because you already know what defeat feels like. You already know what the pain feels like. You already know what uncertainty and doubt and insecurity feels like. You already know what failure feels like. Give yourself a chance. Let's start now. You have a life assignment. And in order to fulfill your assignment, you're going to have to take advantage of every hour and every minute that you are gifted each day. Anybody who has ever achieved any level of success will tell you, you got to get out of your feelings. Your feelings are going to keep you locked in a prison of paralysis, addicted to a drug called comfort. This is your dream. I mean, this is your passion. For real, this is your goal. Which means you got to drive it. Which means you got to get in the driver's seat. Which means you got to grab the steering wheel and you got to make it move. Even if you got to start this trip alone. Now I know that there are some things that you have been hoping will happen. I get it. <laughs> I'm a visionary. I'm a dreamer. But I'm also an action taker. And today I want to encourage you to go beyond talking about what you want to see happen and get to work. You pick up your support along the way. You pick up your help along the way. But every great person, every great woman, every great man, they started their journey all alone and they picked up help, support, and momentum along the way. Nobody can help you do anything until you start. So you got to start now. You have to change your perspective. You have to change your expectation. And you got to believe that this time, the light's going to come on. This time, your parachute's going to open. Anybody that's ever achieved any level of success will tell you they had to jump. Because the great ones pushed through. They had the same thoughts you had. Don't you think you're the only one thinking these thoughts? They had the same thoughts you had, but they pushed through. Steve Harvey said this years ago. If you want it, you got to jump. You got to make that move. And you can't wait to feel right. You can't wait to be comfortable. You can't always be calculated. Sometimes you're not going to have all the answers. I don't want you to be a superhero to everyone else and then turn around and let yourself down. I want you to appreciate and utilize the gifts, the talents, the skills, and the positive attributes that you have been given. You are not afraid to fail, my friend. What you are afraid of is success. Because all you had inside your head for so long is those negative thoughts. The whole time you've been talking yourself out of it and everybody around you has been trying to talk you into it. Give yourself an opportunity 
walk through the door is waiting for you. If you can't find a door, you gotta build a door. Stop waiting until the conditions are perfect to begin and make the conditions perfect. Stop waiting for resources and become resourceful. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You get to choose how you will spend your time and energy. You get to choose what you will do with your now. What are you waiting for? The perfect time? There is no perfect time. The perfect season? There is no perfect season. Because you don't even have to be here. You don't even have to be alive if you are listening to me right now. Every breath that you breathe is mercy. And you better take advantage of that. It is a gift that did not have to be given to you. And so, act now. So let's stop talking about it. And let's get it. Remove yourself from the list of people that have disappointed you, that have lied to you, that have let you down. You are number one on that list. Remove yourself. The real you is breathing down your neck, begging you to manifest. Stop lying to yourself. Stop letting you down. You gotta kill the blame game. Stop blaming it on the person that walked out on you. Stop blaming it on the person that overlooked you. Stop blaming it on the person that undervalued you. Stop blaming it on the person that did not promote you, that did not see it, that did not believe it. Stop blaming everybody and look yourself in the mirror. It's your fault you failed. You started the year with a little motivation and a few ideas and it all tanked before February. And the thing you gotta ask yourself is, am I gonna repeat my history or will I blaze a new trail? Because history for many of you is insecurity. History for many of you is depression and anxiety. And that substance you can't shake and that person you can't leave. History for many of you is, they're better than me. History for many of you is, nobody will show up if I build it. I don't have the time. I'm not good enough. It's time to get out of the way. It is because of you that you are not where you want to be. You are the issue. It's you. Your issue is you. Nobody has lied to you more than you. And so here's what I need you to do. Go find a mirror. Go for a walk. Go for a drive. Tell yourself, this is my year. You gotta be willing to do what 98% of the people in this world are unwilling to do. You gotta eat differently. You gotta work differently. You gotta think differently. You gotta talk differently. You gotta walk differently. If you want elevation, if you want next level, if you wanna see this thing differently this year, everything you do has to change. Your insecurity has been in the way too long. Your jealousy, your envy has been in the way too long. The fear you've been wrestling with has been in the way too long. Get out of the way! It's time to stop watching 2% of the Earth's population crush it, win, execute, finish what they start, do what they say they're gonna do. Snap out of it! You got work to do! I get it, I get it. If we pull up your history, we'll find a lot of brokenness. We'll find a lot of trauma. We'll find a lot of empty places. If we pull up your history, we'll find a lot of failures. This must be the year that you are not defined by your history, but you fulfill your destiny. Why are you here? What were you placed here to do? Get to work, get to work, get to work. Because if you continue to lie to yourself, you won't be able to diagnose and treat your condition, your dysfunction, your disorder in order to treat it and change it. It must be identified and once you identify it, you gotta accept this reality. And the problem with many of you is you have not accepted the fact 
that you are lazy. You have not accepted the fact that you are inconsistent. You can't diagnose what you have not identified. Sometimes you need to go find a mirror and tell yourself with tears in your eyes, I am the problem. Once we stop accusing everybody else for our inconsistency and our lack of execution, all of a sudden the world opens up. We all need to get serious about our lives and ask ourselves the question, what is my God-given destiny? Why am I here? Why have I survived? Some of the most brilliant minds of our generation are high school and college dropouts. Let me ask you a question. When are you going to drop out of the mentality that you are not enough? Please, please do yourself a favor and dispense with the excuses that you don't have time. Dispense with the excuse that you're not good enough. Dispense with the excuse that nobody will show up if I build it. That too many people are better than me. Drop out of the, I tried it last year and it didn't work. No, you didn't work. Doubts gonna knock at your door, and insecurities gonna knock at your door, and adversity and trial and tribulations gonna knock at your door, and difficult tasks gonna knock at your door. And so you need to be prepared. Ready or not, it's coming. Are you prepared? If you're gonna win the year, if you're gonna win in life, then you gotta be prepared, you need perspective, and you need discipline. We get into this information constipation state where it's like we know all these things to do and really it puts us in a state of paralysis because it's like you heard it all before, you've seen it all before. I mean, really, social media has made the world so small, right? Information travels at the speed of light. And so you got all this information. And so we become sedated by information. We become satisfied and content with the fact that we know to do good. But to know to do good and not to do it is a disease. It is wickedness. The time is now to start applying what you know. What's the point of taking notes? What's the point of what's the point of buying courses? What's the point of joining communities? What's the point of making the investment? Some of you have journals full of dreams and no action has been taken. You will find that the men and women that turned the world upside down were the ones who got out of their own way. Get to work! You owe you! To a lot of us, we watch. We watch everybody win in every facet of life. We watch the underdog rise under the lights. And we think to ourselves, when is it going to be my time? When is it going to be my time? And in order to be next, you got to see this thing differently. You got to change the way you live, you eat, you walk, you talk, you think. And once you walk in that newness, then you be next. When inconvenience becomes pleasure, when you have your mind made up that no matter how you're feeling every day, you're going to give it everything you have. You're going to give, you're going to see, you're going to sow, you're going to serve and give it everything you have. Then all of a sudden the world opens up to you. Come to the resolve this year that dedication, discipline, perspective, preparation, is going to be your new code of conduct. Motivation has an expiration date. And when motivation dies, discipline must take its place. The only way you're going to do, the only way you're going to accomplish, the only way you're going to execute is if discipline takes the place of your motivation. But until that motivation expires, and evolves into discipline, you will never become who God has called you to become. First we conquer the day, and then we execute the week, and that week turns into a month, and that month turns into a quarter, and that quarter turns into a year, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're no longer just this motivated onlooker. You are a disciplined, desperate, dangerous fulfiller of destiny. What in the world are you waiting for? There are people that are depending on you. God placed you in this world to do something. Get to work.
You may be average, you may be ordinary, but you have the opportunity every single day to make extraordinary decisions. And what you do today will determine your future. The future is very expensive. The currency to get to the future, the bridge that we build, it is built on your daily decisions, your habits, your programming, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you walk, blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, people that you have to let go, sleep that you have to lose, multiple jobs that you have to work, hours on end of study, beating on your craft every single day. It's not easy, but it's worth it. There are going to be nights you're going to cry yourself to sleep. There are going to be times you're going to want to throw in the towel. But if you keep going, your future self will thank you. If you can hear your future self talking to you now, the future you would say thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not throwing in the towel. Thank you for not allowing the despair and the anguish and the anger and the bitterness and the jealousy and the ego to eat away at your progress and your perseverance and your ability to travail and endure. I believe in the future, number one. You gotta get crystal clear about who you believe you've been destined to be. Because everybody's looking to manifest. We are all looking to evolve. We are all looking to level up. What is your life's purpose? What is your destiny? Why on earth are you here? What is it that you can do today to get closer to the fulfillment of that future? To get closer to the manifestation of the future? What are you doing today? What are you giving today? Remember why you had to let some people go. Remember why you're working so hard towards this thing. You're pressing, you're pushing, you're clawing, you're dragging yourself through mud and through murky water. Come on, remember why you're doing what you're doing. It may be difficult. It may seem impossible. The moment that you discover why you're here, spend the rest of your life Execute. There are going to be times when you give everything you have. And everything that you have is not enough. Push through the pain. Push through the anguish. Push through the brokenness. Do not stop. It's the no quit mentality. Wherever you are now is not where you're going to end up. You are special, and you've been designed to change the world. So many of us want so many different things, and our life is filled with entertainment, and recreation, and people that we have not appraised. Have you appraised your connections? Have you done a scrupulous evaluation of everyone in your life? Are they assets or are they liabilities? Yes, you want the future, but what's your plan? And then the moment that you create the plan and you've ironed out all the kinks and you're crystal clear and you've got this plan, you've got this aim, this target, then you gotta stay committed. With tears in your eyes, you gotta be committed when your brain is hurting. You gotta be committed when you haven't gotten sleep in a few days. You gotta be committed. You gotta plow through that depression, that heaviness, that weariness and you gotta cling to the joy of the thought of the future that if you finish this course, then there is a reward at the end of this pain. You may feel as though you are not able to breathe now. You may be inundated with responsibility and it seems as though there is no way out of this. You have to be grateful for the ground that you've gained and guard the ground that you've gained. Celebrate the small wins. If we keep looking at the big picture, if we keep looking at the end game, if that's all we fix our eyes on, then we'll get off kilter. We'll lose our footing 
and will walk around discouraged because you're not going to just wake up in one day and fulfill destiny. It's the process that's perfecting us. It's the ins and the outs and the nuances. It's the song and the dance between destiny and the journey and the process and the promise. And we've got to learn how to execute the day. Give us this day. We've got to learn how to execute the day. Get you conquer the day. I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And so we've got to celebrate the small wins, those mental wins, those emotional wins, those relational wins, those financial wins, those spiritual wins. We've got, we've got to celebrate, celebrate. And then we've got to be kind, not only to others throughout our process, but we've got to be kind to ourselves. The problem with many of us is that we're not kind to ourselves. Be kind to yourself. You can be assertive, you can be direct, you can be firm, but you can have a little empathy and a little kindness, not only on others, but on yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, you are not going to always feel like doing what you were designed to do, okay? And so we've got to condition ourselves for the stretch. With gratitude, we're going to need that coupled with patience. The future takes time to manifest. The future takes time because you are beautifully equipped to get the results you are currently getting and there are some bigger results that you are after and in order to get those results, in order to manifest that very specific future, you are going to have to acquire a different set of skills, a different work mentality. It's going to require you to become a different version of yourself. Elevation is all over you. Okay, next, you got to seize the opportunity. There are so many opportunities for you to grow, so many opportunities for you to learn, so many opportunities for you to share, for you to give, for you to understand, for you to think, for you to be quiet, for you to speak. And you've got to know when to do, what to do, why to do. This is the paradigm of the future. The future has a specific paradigm that you have to execute. You have to walk in this. You're going to have to move from limited beliefs and you're going to have to move into limitless believing. You have to know your boundaries, establish your guardrails. You got to know your weaknesses and your strengths. Do not stop. It's the no quit mentality.